What's going on guys? It's Jeremy Hopper here. What we're going to do today is we're going to be discussing the disinfection of water to make it potable and we're going to be doing that via pool shock. And the whole point of this is to make that water drinkable so that we don't get sick from any bacteria that may be present. But we're going to take this a step further and we're also going to be discussing the math and the arithmetic behind this process because I think that it's a very important thing to understand and it's also something that I have not seen discussed on YouTube. Now if you go to the website for the Environmental Protection Agency, they state that one must add and dissolve one heaping teaspoon of high test granular calcium hypochlorite for each two gallons of water. They then state that this mixture will produce a stock chlorine solution of approximately 500 milligrams per liter since the calcium hypochlorite has available chlorine equal to 70% of its weight. Now that's an awful lot of material to digest. So what we're going to do is we're going to translate that in English. I'm going to put that on our marker board back here. They specify that we must take one heaping teaspoon of 70% calcium hypochlorite plus two gallons of water and that will equal a 500 milligram chlorine solution. When you examine the packaging that the pool shock comes in, you will find a listing of the active ingredients and you can see where it specifies calcium hypochlorite and you will take note of the percentage available to us, 56.44%. If you recall from the instructions from the EPA, they dictated that we must have 70% calcium hypochlorite available to us. Despite the difference, 56.44% versus 70, we can still utilize this pool shock to suit our needs to disinfect our water. And that is only if we understand the math behind the process. So what we've done is we've taken all of this information and we have expressed it into a mathematical calculation. So the very first thing that we have done is we have taken 500 milligrams per liter and we have expressed that as 500 ppm per parts per million. One milligram per liter is the exact same as one ppm or parts per million. This is the target concentration of chlorine in our solution that we hope to achieve. Next, we multiply that by two gallons of water. This is the amount of water that we have available to us in which we are going to add our calcium hypochlorite. Next, we're going to multiply that by a ratio. This ratio will determine what our final unit of measurement will be for our uh, calcium hypochlorite. The EPA had specified teaspoon as their unit of measurement, so we are using teaspoon here. Now, being that this is a ratio, we are also comparing, which means that we are going to be comparing teaspoon against something else. So we are going to be comparing teaspoon against gallon because that is what our unit of measurement is here. This ratio must reference that unit of measurement. Right here we have 0.70%. That is the decimal format of 70%. That is the amount of calcium hypochlorite that we have available to us. And now we are multiplying that 7 that 70% in decimal format 0 0.70 against 1 million because we are dealing with parts per million. So to summarize this, 500 parts per million times 2 gallons of water times 768 teaspoons per gallon and we're dividing all of that by 0 0.70 multiplied by 1 million. So let's calculate that result. We get 768,000 over 700,000 with the end result being 1.09 teaspoons. And if we reference what the EPA specified, they dictated one heaping teaspoon or slightly more than one teaspoon. So our mathematical equation is correct. Our answer is correct. So now we have a basic understanding of the mathematics behind the calculations of how to make 
our chlorine solution, specifically 500 milligrams per liter, so we can alter this to suit our needs. I have changed from two gallons of water to one quart of water. I have changed my final unit of measurement from teaspoons to grams. And in this ratio, I'm no longer comparing teaspoons against gallons. I'm comparing grams against quart, keeping in mind that in this ratio, we must reference that unit of measurement. I've also changed that numerical value because their one quart of water weighs 946.35 grams. I've also changed this down here because I do not have 70% calcium hypochlorite available to me. I only have 56.44%. Again, this is expressed in decimal format. I'm still multiplying that by 1 million. And the end result is 0.83 grams, meaning that I must add 0.83 grams of 56.44% calcium hypochlorite to one quart of water. And that will provide us the 500 ppm chlorine stock solution, which we then can employ to disinfect contaminated water. So what you see here is our one quart of water we have our 56.44% of calcium hypochlorite. Of course, I am gloved for this process for my own protection. I have a scoopula device. This is nothing more than a scoop that we will employ to dispense the calcium hypochlorite. And I have a triple beam scale available to me, which the unit of measurement is in grams. I have a polystyrene uh, weighing dish. So with that said, let's get started. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our one quart of water and we're going to add the calcium hypochlorite to it. So right now we're going to agitate that water which will assist the calcium hypochlorite in dissolving. And when that completely dissolves, we will have a 500 milligram per liter chlorine stock solution. This can then be utilized to disinfect water to make it potable. While we're waiting for the calcium hypochlorite to dissolve into the water, we're going to go over the ratios that we will employ to utilize that chlorine solution to process contaminated water. And that ratio is one part chlorine solution to 100 parts contaminated water. So we can rewrite that equation so that if I have 1,000 milliliters or one liter of contaminated water, I divide that by 100, which tells me that I need 10 milliliters of my chlorine solution added to this to make it potable, to kill the bacteria that is in it. Our stock chlorine solution is ready to utilize. The calcium hypochlorite has completely dissolved into the water. Likewise, we have our 1,000 milliliters of contaminated water. I will point out that this contaminated water, which, we're, which we are about to try and disinfect, it, this needs to be as clear as possible. You need to remove as much of the sediment and turbidity and murkiness that that water may have because any of that will decrease the effectiveness of our chlorine solution. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extract 10 milliliters of our stock solution and I'm going to add it into our 1000 milliliters of contaminated water. I'm now going to cap these containers up. 
And I'm going to shake this to mix everything together. If this container was too big to pick up and to move like this, you could simply stir it. The whole idea is just to mix everything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let that sit for 30 minutes and after the such time has passed, the water should be disinfected and ready to consume. Well, it's been 30 minutes, so I'm going to uncap the bottle, give it the sniff test, and it smells like chlorine, which is what I want to be able to smell. It tastes just like city water. Now, if that odor of chlorine bothers you, you can always take another clean container and you can aerate this just by pouring it back and forth. And during this aeration process, the chlorine will be given a chance to evaporate out of the water. Likewise, you could just leave your container and cap and the same thing would occur, but at a much slower rate. Now, as great as this chlorine stock solution is at disinfecting your water, it does come at a drawback. And that is the fact that there are some things in your water which are going to be a little bit more resistant to this, such as some strains of protozoa like Cryptosporidium. Um, it is highly resistant to this, so you definitely do take your chances if only relying just on uh, chlorine disinfection. But with that said, if this is the only option that you have available to you, it's definitely a viable one and it's better than nothing. Boiling is always your number one option. But with that said, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you found the information useful and I'll catch you in the next video. So long.